name is Togastai. It means man who sleeps beside the water, and I belong to the Fireweed clan or the Laksamas of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. And uh, we have 22,000 square kilometers of unceded territory that we've never given up to the Crown, we've never negotiated away, and we've never surrendered. We have um, five clans in our system, 13 houses, and uh, house houses are basically matrilineal groups that follow the mother's side. And I come from the Fireweed clan and the Sun House. And that's where my heritage comes from. We do have um, quite a few struggles in our territory. One of the big ones that we're facing right now is the Enbridge Pipeline. If there's a proposed Enbridge Pipeline that's proposed to carry crude oil from the tar sands in Alberta through our territories and pipelines. There's a, there's a dual pipeline that's proposed. And uh, they want to run that oil through this pipeline to Kitimat and put them in tankers and have the tankers travel out to Korea and Japan and uh, other foreign markets. But uh, that's one of the one of the fronts that we're facing right now. Um, as I was telling the, the guys today and, and the defenders of the land meeting, our people walked away from the treaty process October 25th, um, just under a month ago. And uh, we're now in this, this new stage in our history where we are determined in a new future that um, doesn't include treaty negotiations, doesn't include um, anything within the BC treaty process. And we're in a stage now where we're going to begin asserting our title and rights on our lands. But um, today we had a, there's a feast that was going on back home, it was just over. And the, it's, a, it's a traditional feast that we have. It's a way that we recognize um, laws, we recognize business transactions. And uh, today we had a feast where we invited the, a company called Canfort, it's a logging company up north, along with the Ministry of Forests to come out and tell them that uh, these are the laws that we have within our territories. And this is how we plan on making sure that you guys understand those laws. This is our institution, this is the government that you're sitting in here today. And they told the Canfort representative and the Ministry of Forests representative that, they, that they're not only Get telling them a law and um, explaining this law to them, but they're going to enforce it by way of a moratorium. So they have a moratorium on this territory up there that belongs to the Luxilia clan, and the chief of that um, that owns that territory and manages that territory is Kayla. So there's a roadblock happening on that territory. It's been going on since um, the governance meeting where we declared that we weren't going to be part of the treaty process anymore. And um, yeah, that, that's one of the other struggles. There's tons of them. There's a whole pile of different struggles we're facing right now. There's um, an equity mine. There's a, there's a mine called Equity Mine. It's a silver mine in our country, and it's, a, it's located in one of our most sacred sites. And the mine closed um, about 15 years ago, but um, they left behind the biggest environmental disaster in, in North America, and probably comparable to anything else in the world. And uh, the, they left humongous, like acid rock drainage was pouring through the, from the tailing spawns into the uh, ecosystems and killing off our salmon, killing off fish, and killing off everything else that depended on that, including the animals that came down to drink, the, the plants that grew beside the area. Humongous environmental disaster, and our people have never really addressed that. So we're now in this process of addressing it. So the, the people that own that territory are the Tsayu people. And I'm from the Laksamasu clan, the Tayu and the Laksamasu have worked together in the past and are working together on this today. The, there's another clan that is facing uh, the world's biggest hydroelectric, or the, our territory's biggest hydroelectric problem issue. Our territories were flooded out because of um, the, the original Kamano 1 project and the Alcan project. And um, they, they're, uh, this hydroelectric company is interested in expanding their 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 project and our people are going to stop them. And today they, they don't call themselves Kamano or Alcan anymore, they call themselves the Rio Tinto Group. And uh, they were purchased from a company that I believe was from Australia. But uh, our people are beginning to make mobilization happen within, within our nation and within that specific clan group that owns those territories that were flooded and we're going to be sitting down with a company and making some changes with the way the way that uh, they conduct the business there. Another one is um, Huckleberry Mine. 
And there's tons of, tons of other examples. There's agriculture, there's mining companies, exploration companies that are in our territories that, are, that have been doing business as usual. And our people come from the, the, one of the biggest court cases on the land, the Delcomoke versus the Queen. The Wet'suwet'en people are a part of that. My grandparents were part of that, so were my uncles on my dad's side. And I remember when um, an anthropologist named Richard Daly was up, and he brought my uncles out, or my uncles brought him out to go hunting in the Guzi Lake area where this equity mine disaster happened. And this was before the equity mine disaster actually occurred. And I remember going out there with my, my, my dad and my uncles and uh, learning about this, this guy and what he was doing. And my, my father told me that he's here to try and document what's happening, how we, how we use the land so that we can explain better when we have to go to court one day. And uh, that's exactly what happened. He was an anthropologist. He wrote about uh, the, his experience with our people. He actually talked about my uncles in that trip that he took out there, and I was just a young boy at the time. But I recall distinctly that uh, my responsibilities that were explained to me then and about that, about that time in my life, those few years of my life as a child growing up with my grandparents and my dad, you know, they brought me out to places and said, this is your territory. This is what you're responsible for when you grow up. This is what you have to look after. This territory belongs to you. They brought me in these places and showed me the names of the, the, the names of the boundary lines, the peaks and the rivers and the streams and stuff that flowed through those areas. And they, they told me this for a reason. And I, I understand that reason now because I'm now the assistant negotiator for people. And when we go out on the land, I go out there with a purpose. I know exactly where the territories are that belong to my people, the, the Luxamasia. And I know that when my grandmother told me those, 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 those territories, when she said, this is what you have to look after when you grow up, she said, this isn't, she, she never ever said that this used to belong to your people. She never said it now belongs to a company, it now belongs to the crown, it now belongs to somebody else. She said, this belongs to you. When you grow up, you have to look after it. And that's what I'm doing today. Our people are, are out of the treaty process and are mobilizing that. And I'm helping our people as best I can to begin moving forward.